Hi, this is Zach Mir with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Box Markets for Sunday, the 16th of October. Starting off with the FTSE 100, where uh, the old uh, support uh, around 69.60 became new resistance, was suggested that that mid channel line could come in as resistance uh, after the uh, d dip that we had down towards 6700. That proved to be the case on Friday, the high 69.76. It's not a bad call in terms of the uh, technicals working. Uh, that's still the resistance area. And while we're below that, say 69.60, 69.70, there is a chance of a final dip down to the lower parallel of the wide uh, trend channel from March as low as 66.60. Hopefully that would be the end of our current pain, but uh, obviously you can't rule that out uh, in the current rather uncertain political and fiscal environment. But at the moment, probably the best uh, indication here is that uh, resistance will come in here towards 7,000 again. And maybe that's the uh, particular area to look at for the start of the week. Moving on to pound dollar, where um, the media has been calling this cross down a lot, but actually we've been well off the lows. The lows are on one at one dollar three, and uh, we actually hit one fourteen uh, on speculation, I suppose, of the uh, fiscal or the tax U-turn. Current situation not looking great in the sense that we've hit that August resistance line, and that's the uh, what the fourth peak below the falling 50-day moving average. That does suggest that we're uh, due uh, a new leg to the downside. I suppose the best is that we might head up and just uh, t take out the 50-day line around 115 before coming down again. Support 109 now, not 1010, which was uh, the previous uh, position of that May support line projection. So 109 support. Below that, though, we have the risk of a move towards parity, uh, which is the uh, floor of that August falling trend channel. But at the moment, we're still away from that. And uh, really, the, the main bearish driver that... Uh, those failures below the 50-day moving average, but one above uh, 109 on an end-of-day close basis, we still have an outside chance of recovery. Moving on to the stocks, and uh, as usual in the recent past, not too many to look at. Uh, first one is uh, Boston International, which I thought I'd just give a, uh, a quick mention of. Here we had a final gap to the downside there through 0.6, we had a gap, gap closed by signal, so versus 0.65 also breaking the 50-day moving average, which is now rising. So that's a decent signal there and obviously a very illiquid stock. Initial target here up to uh, 0.96 and the 200-day moving average. And uh, if we do better than that, I get a weekly close above the 200-day line, then it's up to one and a quarter, which is post-May resistance. But uh, I'm guessing that this is not the most liquid or tradable stock in town. Something which is perhaps a little bit more tradable is Cobra Resources here. We've broken that line of resistance there from April. Uh, so analogous to quite a few stocks now and uh, we've got the 50-day moving average almost flat with the rising 50, uh, rising 200-day moving average that suggests that we're ready for a new leg to the upside as does the uh, rising trend channel that I've drawn from February this year top of the channel there is high as three and a half pence and above one and a half uh, we could be going with three and a half perhaps as soon as the end of this year so uh, maybe Cobra is back in business Stock which has been back in business uh, is uh, Drum. Uh, we had uh, the breakthrough the 0 0.6, 0 0.7 pence area back in August. Made reasonable progress there. Three steps up, two steps down type of thing. We had a gap there, gap fill rebound. V-shaped bull flag as well. And uh, basically hitting the top of that rising trend channel from December last year around uh, the 1 to 1.1 pence area. Above 1.1, looking for 1.4 or 1.5, uh, which is the... Um, top of a rising trend channel or at least a resistance line projection from back in April 2020. So uh, I think above the 0.9 area, we could see one and a half there for drums over the near term, maybe as soon as the end of next month. Another relatively obscure contender is uh, Intercede, but uh, the attraction here is this uh, beautiful uh, bull flag breakout that we had at the end of the week. Uh, very strong unfilled gap to the upside day that we had uh, earlier this month on the 10th of October. I uh, call that the rocket launcher and it looks as though we're just about to break uh, on the second half of a, a, a vertical move to the upside that we've had. Initial target there up to 62 pence but we could be up to the uh, 70 to 75, well 70 to 80 pence area which is basically 2022 resistance by the end of the year and uh, with that strong configuration that we have there, the unfilled gap to the upside off the low, 
uh, I would say that 75 or 80 could very much be on by the end of the year. Less dramatic, perhaps, is uh, N4 Pharma. And uh, here you can see uh, that we managed to uh, break a resistance line there from May, hold above the 200-day moving average at uh, two and, well, basically around uh, two and three-quarter pence. And above that, looking for a return to the main four pence resistance area, which is post-May resistance. So uh, literally above the 200-day uh, the line, looking for four pence on N4 Pharma. Decent reaction to the interview on uh, Friday with uh, Powerhouse Energy. And uh, here it's interesting that we uh, broke down through the lows of June, July. But uh, with the move back on Friday, which uh, broke a line of resistance there at 1.2, you can say that above that we're looking for at least the 50-day moving average around 1.5. A best case scenario target up to 2.5, which is the 200-day moving average and post-April uh, resistance. But uh, ideally, the shares remain above. 1.2 and uh, that could see them through uh, to a the start of a meaningful recovery after the uh, sharp sell-off that we've had for most of the year to date. Uh, moving on to a uh, stock which is not quite so uh, uh, flighty in its current uh, price action here we've got uh, Proton Power, Proton Motor Power Systems and uh, here the highlight is that we are near, we bounced off the lows and uh, have a rising 50-day moving average that should uh, stand the stock in good stead to uh, hit retest um, August resistance around 14 pence. Best case scenario target over the next two to three months if we've got a quick weekly close above 12 pence and that uh, November 2021 resistance line is uh, the possibility of move towards 25 pence. And uh, with that rising 50 day line near the lows, that seems uh, a reasonable call to make after extended support near 9 pence since the summer. Stock which uh, maybe surprised even me in terms of its uh, uh, dis its way of rebounding so sharply was uh, QFI, Quadrise uh, Fuels. Uh, here we've got um, Bear Trap re rebound, uh, rising 50-day uh, moving average near the low and also the um, mid-move consolidation in a bull flag. Uh, the likelihood here is that uh, we can get an end-of-day close through the 2 pence level we should go up to uh, 2022 resistance at two and a half pence over the following few weeks. So support in place there around one and three quarter pence, so above one and three quarters, looking at 2.5 on quad rise. Saw uh, the charting efforts of Noel Borg um, on Twitter today, and I think he's uh, bang on the money with uh, seeing machines. Here we had an unfilled gap to, to the upside through the uh, 50 day moving average. Earlier in the month, uh, that's now rising, which uh, is always uh, was normally a good thing to happen uh, near the lows. And uh, above that, at uh, around six pence, looking for nine pence at the top of that uh, broadening triangle from back in March. But uh, that V-shaped bull flag after the gap higher looks uh, like a very strong configuration indeed. Finishing off with uh, just two more stocks. First is uh, THG, which has been a bit of a nightmare and probably will continue to be a nightmare. And... Uh, you're almost uh, rather sheepish in terms of looking at it. But we do have some bullish divergence here. An uptrend line since uh, back in uh, the middle of last month with the lower lows but higher RSI trace. That should at least get the shares up to the 50 pence zone, which is the current position of the 50-day moving average and a June resistance line. So at least a 20% rebound from current levels, even if the shares fade again, which uh, given their recent history, one would have to be quite mindful of. Finishing off uh, with um, a stock which I don't normally look at, but uh, here we are, XP Factory. Nice uh, rounded uh, rebound there uh, through the 50-day moving average um, this week. And uh, the view is that uh, we should at least be able to get up to the 200-day line at 22. May old resistance uh, was, uh, July, August resistance was at uh, 17 and a half pence, so above 17 and a half. Looking for the 200-day line at uh, around 22. Best case scenario by the end of the year up to 35. And uh, the, I have to say the turnaround here that we've had, like a W-shaped uh, reversal, does seem to be quite a healthy one. Back by July, August bullish divergence as well in the RSI window. So uh, looking for XP Factory to deliver the goods and get back to where it was earlier this year. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.